Perhaps Chris John has the best case that he actually beat Marquez. It was a close fight, but you could argue he did win a majority of the rounds. That's really saying something. John, as you mentioned, is undefeated, and as was noted, has wins against other world-class fighters at featherweight. So let's take a look at the tail of the tape now for that man, Chris John of Indonesia against Rocky Juarez of the United States. You see the one-year age advantage for Juarez. John is an exceptionally tall featherweight at 5'7 and a half with a two and a half inch height advantage here. Half inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in under the 126 pound limit. Both have gone up about eight or 10 pounds tonight. Rules of the bout whether unofficial ringside scorer Harold Letterman. The Chris John, Rocky Juarez fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Toyota Center, Houston, Texas, where tonight, Oscar de la Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions is proud to present an evening of world-class professional prize fighting. It's HBO World Championship Boxing, sponsored by Tecate, Cerveza con Caracter, and Southwest Airlines No Hidden Fees, all bouts sanctioned by Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. At ringside for this contest, the three judges scoring are Raul Caiz Sr., Tom Miller, and Gail Van Oy, and inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Lawrence Cole. And now, let's get this party started. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Featherweight Championship of the World. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, green, and white, officially weighing in at 125, one half pounds. This Olympic silver medalist now has a professional record consisting of 28 victories, including 20 knockouts with four defeats. The challenger from Houston, Texas, Ricardo Rocky Jorge. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing white with red, officially weighing in at 125, one quarter pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one. 42 victories, including 22 knockouts, with one draw from Semarang, Indonesia, the reigning, defending, undefeated, WBA featherweight champion of the world, Chris, the Dragon, John. Thank you, Roberto. No, thank you. Rocky, Chris. Come on. Come here, Rock. All right, gentlemen. I went over the instructions earlier in the dressing room. I want you to obey my commands. Sex off all times. Understood? Touch them up. Best of luck to both of you. In recent years, we've seen another fighter from the Pacific Rim, Manny Pacquiao, become a boxing superstar with a violent style. Can Chris John do the same? With his technical boxing skills, Rocky Juarez gives John a seemingly perfect foil. There are pronounced style contrasts in both of our fights this evening. Rocky Juarez is a boxer puncher at his best. He uses his boxing to set up his dangerous left hook. Christian is a boxer who uses space and lateral movement to control the ring and limit the contact in the fight. And early on, John working behind his very active and good jab, the long jab. And Emmanuel, the favorite combination is the double jab right cross. It's really the footwork, the movement, and the, the smarts that make him an excellent fighter. 
Well, I think the all-around upper body movement, in addition to the footwork, is making John a much more Ready. elusive target, whereas Rocky's coming in a real squat, set Ball. down, basic, stationary, straightforward Ball. position. I mentioned that Juarez's losses are all to top fighters. Two losses to Marco Antonio Barrera. The first one, highly controversial. He really didn't know how good Umberto Soto was when Soto got the best of him in Chicago in what was his very first loss. And then the fourth loss was against the very great Juan Manuel Marquez. So there are no flies on the record of four losses so far for Rocky Juarez, though, of course, he's fallen a little bit short so far of where he would have expected to be at this point in his pro career. He seems to be very determined and very focused tonight particular fight in front of his hometown and with the frustration of having lost in three world championship fights he'll probably fight the best fight of his career tonight yeah this is his fourth title shot and uh you know some point to his connection to one of the most influential and best connected managers in the sport shelly finkel there's also his olympic background and the fact that at his best he's an entertaining fighter He's very, he's a little bit faster coming out of the gate this fight than he has been in many of his last fights where he came out very slow but he seems to come out with a lot of intensity a lot of focus and aware of the fact that he's known for being a slow starter is that because max it's now or never yeah it may be juarez for an aggressive fighter has throughout his career i think tried to be too perfect waiting until just the right moment to throw his hand and i think he realizes now maybe his last shot on a stage like this he needs to let those hands go a problem for him early though has been the accuracy of john's punching and there's a good right hand by rocky but for the most part rocky's been able to close the gap and is cut up the distance on chris john right now for the most part and he's fighting very much at the distance Break. that he would like to fight at Referee Dickie Cole is the most prominent of the referees we see here in Texas. Anytime you're doing a card here, you know you're going to see Dickie in at least one of the two main events. Lawrence Cole. Lawrence Cole. Me. Yeah. Lawrence Cole. He's the son of Dickie. Backing up, okay? I don't want this guy coming forward, okay? Let's keep him backing up. But look, when you get close to him now, we gotta dig the body, okay? You gotta dig that body when you get close. But look, the jab is good, but you look, you gotta get busy here, okay? Oh. I want more fighting, in and out, keeping moving, manzo kitty, okay? Use the jab in the back step in the faint, okay? And move left. All right? We're, get, we're getting him too close. Okay, the jab, the feint, keep the distance. In and out. Chris yeah. John spent much of his career fighting under the tutelage of the trainer with whom he first took up boxing. He had a, an acrimonious split with that man a few years ago and now trains in Perth, Australia under the trainer you heard in the corner, Chris, uh, Craig Christian. And I think Christian was telling me exactly what I felt, that the fight is a lot at a closer range than they would like to be. And as a result, at this stage, I say the fight is going more towards the plan of Juarez than it has been for John. He's closing up the gap on him, and Craig Christian is telling Chris Jones to try to create more space to move. He's letting him get too close. You know, it's also a fight here in Houston. Juarez is the hometown favorite uh, uh, and hero, and not to mention a sentimental favorite here because he's this really good fighter who's never even been able to pick up one of these belts in this era of multiple belts. Um, Chris John has to assume that close rounds will not go his way on the scorecard. Can we take as a given, Emmanuel, that Rocky is the harder puncher? Yes, I would think Rocky is definitely the harder puncher. And, and, and it's just pattern, even though he may not be a hit on point, I think the fight is still moving more in the direction that he would like to have him move in. It's going to be a tremendous disappointment to Chris John if he surrenders his title here. It's his first fight ever in the United States after 43 fights in Indonesia and Japan. And he says that he is taking the lowest paycheck of his title reign, which goes all the way back to 2003. And he's probably fighting one of the most determined fighters that he's ever fought, too. 
You know, Juarez so far is fighting an inspired fight considering the quality of opponent and what's at stake here. Jim, you mentioned earlier, he is, he started faster and seemingly more determined early in the fight than he has in the past. Well, particularly in the first loss to Barrera, it was the slow start that really cost him. He dominated the second half of the fight, and he fought the first four rounds the way he fought the last eight. Clearly, he would have won. He's putting in those body shots early, putting that money in the bank early. Juarez. sure that Chris John has yet solved the space equation the way that Craig Christian wanted him to, Emmanuel. I don't, I don't think so. Right now, I don't know who's winning the fight, but it looks, as I say, it's just the way that Juarez wanted him to be, though. But Juarez is going to have to keep his intensity up the entire fight, too. Indonesia is a larger country than the Philippines, and Chris John, by all accounts, is the Manny Pacquiao of Indonesia. In terms of popularity, yes. Time! A very busy fight, also. So a large nation roots for Chris John to keep it going. Tomorrow morning, a minor league baseball player shot by police in his own driveway after police mistook his car for one that was stolen. Don't miss. Bryant Gumbel's report on real sports. And Monday night, a brand new event, the BNP Paribas Showdown for the Billie Jean King Cup. One night of live women's tennis featuring the Williams sisters, Yelena Yankovic and Anna Ivanovic. Compu box numbers in round two. Chris John landing 17 out of 73, Juarez 11 out of 66. In both rounds so far, John has landed more punches, and they've thrown just about the same number. But all of John's landed punches, by and large, are jabs. Juarez is getting in those solid body blows, which both Max and Emmanuel pointed out. visibly dropping his elbows just a little bit to try to contend with those body shots. That may cut down on the number of jabs he can get off. Both guys are fighting very good defensive, even though it's a fast-paced fight, but both guys seem to be avoiding getting hit with clean punches for the most part. The most effective punch has been the jab from both fighters. And, and therefore, I think that highlights Juarez's body punching where even when John partially blocks it, it's landing with a thudding impact. Juarez is shot. Among a variety of trials and tribulations in his career, Juarez tells us that for the last couple of years, he has suffered from double vision in the left eye. Double vision so severe that from time to time, he misses the salt shaker or the beverage container when he reaches for it. And he finally went to a doctor and had cartilage removed from under the left orbital bone. And there is now a small metal plate behind that bone. And maybe that double vision, which affected certain performances, coupled with a layoff before he fought Barrios, left the impression that Juarez is on the downside of his career. So far tonight, it doesn't look that way, although John's having a much better round here in the third. John has landed a couple of right hands here in the third round, and those right hands are sufficient to show us that he does not have real pop with that punch. Seems abundantly clear that if Chris John wins the fight, it's yet another decision. In a career that so far shows 20 of them. The left eye of Rocky Juarez is beginning to close up. 
And that could be a factor going down to the late rounds because the fight is what I see is a very close fight and very difficult to score. John seems to have gotten busy this round. Good uppercut by Chris John. Juarez getting closer and punctuating the round with a left hook to the chest. And there's a look at Juan Baby Bull Diaz. Like Juarez, a Houston native. One of the most intriguing characters in boxing because through his professional career, he has been pursuing an undergraduate education at the University of Houston downtown. Expects to graduate with a degree in May. Is taking the LSAT very soon. That's the test that you take to get into law school. Hopes to be in law school by this fall. It all makes for an amazing day-to-day -day workload. At one point, a couple of years ago, he said to his manager, Willie Savannah, I'm getting tired. I think I have to drop the uh, the academic career. And Savannah reportedly said to him, if you want to quit something, you're going to have to quit boxing because I'm not going to let you quit school. More feints and more one-twos, okay? And keep moving left. Round four begins. Harold Letterman, how'd you score the first three? Attention. Two rounds to one. 29, 28, Chris John. Jim, this guy is a cutie if I ever saw a cutie. I mean, he boxes, he moves, he doubles that jab. When Rocky Juarez gets in, you know, in close and, uh, and tries to get in Chris John's chest, John either whacks him with a right hand like he did right there or ties him up. I mean, he's about as true as he can get. Good ring generalship by Chris John. Two to one, Chris John. The circumstances of Juan Manuel Marquez's loss to Chris John in Borneo were such that on the surface you would immediately leap to the conclusion, oh, maybe this was a home court decision or some kind of a robbery. And the Marquez people will say to you that they think they won the fight, but they don't say it in such terms as to suggest that it was anything like a highway robbery. It's more like, oh, it was a close fight and we think we won seven rounds. That is by no means the kind of outrage that goes with going to a foreign country and being robbed. Chris John is a very Donald Staff fighter, upper body movement, good defense, and very, very busy. And I may be wrong, but looking at his facial expression between rounds, I think he has great stamina. And that's going to be a big factor going down the stretch. First couple of rounds, Rocky Juarez seemed determined to impose himself. I don't see necessarily less of an effort from Juarez, but I do see Chris John shifting into another gear. And it's going to be interesting to see whether Juarez can follow him into that gear. Well, the suggestion was that in the third round, he had stepped up the pace by throwing more punches. By CompuBox count, 95 of them in that round. So it was a significant step up. Max, I agree with you. I see that uh, even though Juarez came out determined, he's still fighting with that same determination. I see a lot of determination on the part of John, and I think he's going to be that way going down the stretch. And whether Rocky can hold up is the question. Looks like John has a pretty decent beard. Rocky yep. cracked him with a straight right hand. That's right, and he took it and kept going. And Rocky can punch. He's a real puncher. And he's cutting the ring down very well tonight, too. It's a good fight between two very good fighters with contrasting styles. Exactly what we expect to see in the main event. I think Chris John's confidence is rising. I see him standing his ground from time to time now and trading with Rocky Juarez, yes. as if to say, I've taken your best. Look, it was a good round. It was a good round. Look, this is your night, baby. Nobody can take this away from you. Only you can do it. Only you can take this away. You got to get closer, though, okay? Listen, ain't you hurting this guy in the body, okay? I'm telling you, you hurt this guy in the body, okay? But you got to get closer to stay there. When you get there, you got to stay there, okay? Give me a drink. Okay. 
All right. And keep flicking the jab. Doesn't have to hit him every time. Just put the jab in front of his eyes, okay? And work off that. Yeah? Faint him. Now faint him. All right? Stop letting him go. Here we see Rocky Warwick's limb, which I think was the cleanest punch of the entire fight at this point. A beautiful time right hand. Emmanuel Stewart mentioned the swelling around Rocky Juarez's left eye. Subtle, not exactly imperceptible, but it isn't really a dangerous situation so far. It's just like a brewing storm on the horizon. You know something about the right hand Juarez landed, though, Emmanuel, as you mentioned, it was crisp and straight and accurate. Chris John doesn't take too many on the chin. He's got hit in the face, but he doesn't take too many right on the chin, and that's all the difference. Yeah, in fact, he's a very good defensive fighter for the most part. And, and Rocky's doing a good job on defense tonight, too. There's a lot of punches are being thrown, accurate, precision punches, but very few are landing completely clean. Most of them are de half deflected. The, in boxing, the punch that looks spectacular but, a, but doesn't hit the chin is not nearly as effective as the short punch right on the chin because on the chin, the neck can't act as the shock absorber the same. Another good right hand by Juarez. Going back by the back of the head, all right? Lawrence Cole warning Chris John against holding the back of the head. So in one fell swoop, John gets cracked with another right hand and warned by Lawrence Cole. Doesn't seem to blunt his confidence. He's beating Juarez to the punch now. Rocky is following rather than leading, but when he gets close, he does damage. Over the top with the right hand for John, and he backs Juarez up. John, as you mentioned, not a big puncher, Jim, but he hits hard enough to keep guys honest. Rocky Juarez simply can't run headlong into these shots. down the middle with the right hand by John. Good, good right hand down the middle. And Opened up a cut over the, the left side. Absolutely right, and it's a bleeding cut. That was the most important punch in the fight so far. And you know what I've noticed, and most of Chris Johnson's right hands have been, I call them looped right hands. Now he's starting to mix up and shoot some of his shots through the center. Just like that one now. That is a very dangerous cut above the left side for Rocky Juarez. It's going to affect the fight unless his cut man, Joe Chavez, can get it to stop within the next round or two. Good right hand by Juarez. John grins as he backs away. For the most part, Chris John is still setting the tempo, and even when he gets hit with a good punch, he comes back and takes control. He will never let Juarez take completely control and get a good momentum to go on. Left hand uppercut by John. He's got a lot of game. He's undefeated in over 40 fights with a win against Juan Manuel Marquez, not to mention Derek Gaynor and some others. It's not an accident. Hiroyuki Inoki of Japan, who, uh, who may be a better fighter than a couple of the guys who have belts in this division. Indeed. I need you to be closer to him, man. Yeah. No, we cannot give him, we cannot let this guy mm -hmm. have his gun outside. We talked about this, right? Yeah. We got to out jab, and we, when we get close, we got out, got out walking. Lance, what was it? All time. All right. I, didn't, I was on the other side of where I was, so I didn't know if it was a headbutt or a right hand. Okay. Okay, Rock. Well, now listen. I need, I need you to get closer to this guy, okay? Yeah. I really need you to work now, Rock. Right? Okay? What? Huh? What? I got you. Here we see the right hand that I believe was that opened up to cut, and it was a right hand, not a butt. A right hand right over the left shoulder, perfectly. And you can see right after that, you can see Rocky Juarez react to it, and you can feel that that probably was the punch that opened up the cut. Okay, don't get this guy no room. I don't want this guy to have no room. I want you close. I want this a close. I want you in close with him, guy, okay? All right? Let's go. I want you to work, baby. Okay? You got to I want you to keep saying that one hand and other hand right. Like okay. it's up! One hand and other hand right. If there's a jab contest, John is determined to win it. 
He has thrown nearly 100 more jabs than Juarez so far, landing 57 out of 254. Averaging 50 jabs per round. Chris Jones. That, of course, is what set up the right hand that cut Juarez over the left side. Between round period, I'm told, was a little longer than the normal one minute. Harold Letterman has an explanation why. What you, they call time out when the doctor comes into the ring, and then they call time in when the doctor leaves the ring so that the corner gets a full minute to work on their fighter. Only in Texas? No, no, no. They do the same thing in California, Jim. A lot of states do that. They you want, like it? They want the corner man to give the guy, uh, you know, to have a full minute to work on a fighter. Ronnie Shields needed that minute to close Rocky Juarez's cut. It's a good rule. You know, the more that I'm, I'm watching fights, and I'm beginning to believe that referees maybe should not be the one that determines whether a punch or uh, a headbutt causes a cut because in their job of refereeing, they really don't see. They should have to confer with somebody at the end of the round that's watching it on a monitor, maybe. I got two words. Video replay. Video uh, we've replay. Been down this, we've been down yep. this road before. So far, only New Jersey is yep. using it. Absolutely right. You and know, Rocky Juarez, like Jerry Quarry, the heavyweight in the 70s, who was fighting in the Ali Frazier Foreman era, is a B-plus in an era of A's. Barrera, Marquez, and maybe Chris John, too. And here you see Juarez, the B-plus, trying his best Fight. to be the very best he can be to overcome the difference. Early on, it seemed like maybe he could do it. At this point, it looks like Chris John is really asserting himself. And look at the quality of the guys that he's fought for each one of these four title fights. Yes, a, a, a who's who of the yeah, Golden Era. Who. Incidentally, the initial, the initial returns on the cut work in Juarez's corner are very good. Uh, so far, this cut is not bleeding here in round number six. But and remember, it was opened in the first minute of the fifth. Chris John has that kind of right hand that he, he twists at the end of the punch that can reopen that cut at any second. Just caught him there with the right hand. Could cause the blood to begin to flow. Lawrence Colson ruled that a slip. Appropriately so, I believe. He's punching down at Juarez with that twisting motion at the end of the punch, and uh, it's a bad recipe for Juarez. The danger for John is if he focuses too much on the cut and begins to try to hit the cut to the exclusion of other parts of his tactics, Juarez might start beating him to the punch. You, you can wait too much if you look to land the one punch in the right place. Good right hand by John again. John is a very elusive fighter. His body of movement and footwork is a little bit different than Warriors, and that's been a big difference at this stage. Beautiful, beautiful, Chris. Beautiful. Keep throwing that overhand right. Keep throwing that right hand, the right hook. Right hook, Harry, that's it. Three. What are you trying to do? But look, you got to get in there, you got to out-jab the guy. Then when you get close, you got to go to work, okay? That's all it is. Nothing more, nothing less than that, okay? Listen, this is a close fight, man. You understand? That guy's tough. You got to take that title from him, okay? Okay? You, you, you want this. I know you want this. You work your butt off for this, you understand? So look, now get out there. You got to get closer, okay? Close the distance. We can't have no distance with the guy. We got to be in close with him. You got to... Dig down now. You got to dig down, okay? This is your fight. This is your night, baby. Okay? Coach is out. How many times, night after night, have we seen Ronnie Shields in the position of trying to encourage a fighter who is in tough to rise to the occasion and do his best? And seemingly too seldom has it happened for Ronnie, who seems to be sometimes a bit of a hard luck trainer. Harold, how do you have it so far? Okay, Jim. Five rounds to one. 59, 55, Chris John. Jim, I gotta tell you, he's just outworking Rocky Juarez. When Rocky gets in close, he doesn't move his hands. I mean, he gets inside, but he doesn't let his shots go. He's gotta start scoring shots. In the meantime, John keeps working and working and working, using that left jab, like Max said, dropping the right on him. And you know, he's got him busted up, and he's just outworking him at every round. Five to one, based on clean punching, Chris John. Fascinatingly, and I wouldn't disagree with that score, just based on what I've seen so far. But fascinatingly, my sense is that Juarez is fighting about as well as we've ever seen him fight. I agree with you, Jim. I think he's fighting maybe the best fight I've ever seen him fight. It's just that he's got a guy that every time he gets set, Chris John punches, changes angles, moves in and out, 
Tristan's his upper body at a different angle, just like he's doing there, and he can't get his rhythm to go on. Maybe with the exception of the first Barrera fight. Um, I also wouldn't be surprised if the official judges' scorecards were a lot closer than Harold's. This is Houston, and as I mentioned, Juarez is a sentimental favorite in boxing anyway because he's viewed as a hard luck fighter. Yeah, but I think the gap between them is growing, not not shortening. Yeah. And, uh, and John is is beginning to sort of do what he wants in there. And I think that becomes increasingly visible even to a biased judge. Yeah. Although it wouldn't be surprising if some of the judges had the first two rounds to Juarez and maybe found another round since then to give to him. I agree. And, and incidentally, in case you're wondering about the audacity of Chris John coming in here, he says, on short money to fight Rocky Juarez in his own town. I mentioned his win over Hiroki Inoki of Japan, a terrific fighter. That was in Tokyo. So obviously, he's not scared oh, to go. go to your home floor. Gutsy for a guy without knockout power, Jim. Juarez doing some oh good work timing John at times with the left jab, I think. Clearly being outboxed, but at times timing John and catching him flush with the jab. But here, again, being beaten to the punch. And being outpunched. Outpunched, too, also. Time! Juan Manuel Marquez now ranks in every credible ranking system as the number two pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, just behind Manny Pacquiao. His two performances against Pacquiao were epic. In both fights, he won more rounds than did the Filipino star. So Juan Manuel Marquez, despite having lived most of his career in the shadows of Marco Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales, bigger name stars from Mexico, has emerged as close to the top of the heap as you can possibly get. Okay? Let's go, baby, come on. I need you to put combinations together, though. You're giving me one shot. I need three and four shots, okay? Look, move your head. But as you're going in, use this jab. Okay? Power punches through the seventh round. Chris John landing 89 out of 260. Juarez 53 out of 206. Welcome. Chris John threw 110 punches in the seventh round. Again, stepping up the pace and landed 37 of them, 37 of them, which is a pretty good clip. Now you mentioned the stamina earlier, Max, and uh He's showing it as his pace is gradually increasing throughout the fight. You know, he's also, he looks like he's having fun. He's smiling at the end of rounds. Got caught with a left hook there. But once again, you see him come back. He will not let Waters take control. And he also he, rolled, yeah, he, he rolled with that left hook yeah. and diminished the uh, power of the impact. Yeah, but he comes right back. He's just out working him right now. And, and Juarez is fighting a good fight, but the guy is punching from so many different angles and, and twisted and pivoted and punching. And it's just very difficult for him to figure out and keep up with. We've been talking for the past few years about boxing as the ultimate global sport. Here's yet another sign. Chris John and his camp were extremely confident going into this fight, taking, by his standards, not a lot of money to fight on an undercard, uh, to expose himself to the American television audience. He was sick, he had a virus several days ago, and um, admitted that had it been a fighter like Marquez and not Juarez, he would have thought about pulling out of the fight. That's how confident John and his camp were about beating Juarez. Yeah, he got sick because Houston's so cold. <laughs> Which goes to show you how hot it is in Indonesia. John was born in Jakarta.
moved by his family who were poor rice farmers to a small rural town. Ultimately moved back to the provincial capital after he graduated high school and had taken up boxing to begin his professional career. His father, a former fighter, began teaching him to box at age six because John said he wanted to give me something and this was really all he had to give. And of course, in the ultimate sport of fathers and sons, Rocky Juarez is named Rocky in honor of Rocky Marciano <laughs> by a father who was determined that he would be a fighter too. Speaking of determination, I wonder if what we're seeing here is a last stand by Juarez. He's doing some good work cornering John and throwing body shots, or if this is the kind of resurgence that Juarez is having in the fight. Well, this is exactly what you want to see us with to do, was to close the gap and keep it closer. That was a good, strong round, I thought, for Rocky. The last minute of the round, definitely Juarez's be best minute of the fight. I don't want you to fight. He's got to come. March 7, eh? Boxing After He's Dark returns with a triple header featuring some of the sport's best young fighters. James Kirkland meets Joel Julio in the main event. What a fight. Also that night, Victor Ortiz faces Mark Ar Mike Arnudis, and Robert Guerrero battles Daoud Jordan. April 11, it's the return of our Emmy Award-winning series 24-7. This time around, our cameras follow superstars Manny Pacquiao and Ricky Hatton as they prepare for their upcoming mega matchup. West Coast viewers can catch 24-7 after that evening's live boxing. And on May 2, HBO Pay-Per-View has the live fight between Pacquiao, the sports pound-for-pound -pound king, and Hatton, boxing's most prolific ticket seller. Dig that body. Dig that body. Come on, baby. Let's go. Joe Chavez has done a tremendous job on the cut above Rocky Juarez's left eye. You know, and even though Rocky may be behind on points, I won't say because I don't know what the official scores. I've been impressed with the punching pad that he still has at this later stage of the fight. So Chris John is the still stay alert and has respect for Rocky. Even though he may be winning the fight, Rocky still is a very dangerous one-punch puncher. Even as Juarez had a good second half of that round, he took an awful lot of punishment coming in. But he was getting to John's body in the latter part of the round. And he had him in a phone booth, fighting at the range at which Juarez can be most effective against this guy. Step! Step back. There was an example, Jim, slipping the jab and landing a body shot. punching against the good counter punch. It is easy to give Juarez a lot of credit after being dominated in certain rounds for doing better, but still, even as Juarez is landing these shots, it looks like he's getting out kicked he's clean just, yeah, two to one. Yeah, you may give him credit because he's doing comparatively better in other rounds, but nevertheless, John still seems to be winning the fight. Yeah, and in this round, John is beginning to command the distance again. Stepping away from side to Wait. side, stepping back in to land his punches, and then moving away again. Juarez has put in good body work throughout the fight, especially early. Wonder if it'll be enough to slow John down at any point in the fight. Blood now on the bridge of the nose of Juarez. Perhaps a sprinkle from the cut above the eye. The left hook to the head is a punch he has seldom thrown all night. I, in fact, I can't recall too much of him ever throwing it. Most of his hooks have been to the body and his jabs, but not too many left hooks to the head. Hard right hand by Warren. He tried a few hooks to the head early and missed by a bunch. Wonder now if he's closed the gap enough that those hooks that were missing earlier, Emmanuel, might start to land. Yeah, he should try it anyway, because he hasn't thrown it. In it. And, you know, body punching may be effective, but I don't think so. At this stage, I'd be straight. Everything would be to the head with full power if I was Juarez. Well, it's interesting. At our fighter meeting yesterday, I asked Rocky about his 
reputed money punch the left hook, and his answer was, hey, I think my right hand's just as good as my left hook. This good, good. That was better. Suck it in, suck it in. Suck it in. Suck it in. We're gonna tear up his face a lot. Lopez, tell. Chris. This is a chance. Chris, this is a chance. You listening to me? We need to win the last three rounds, Chris. We must win the last three rounds. You listening to me? Three rounds to go. I need you to win by boxing. By throwing the right hook, the right hand. And the jab and the feint. The jab and the feint. Here you see Chris John landing punches, as I was saying, from all counter angles. Things that is very difficult to see because he's punching all while he's twisting and turning. Always punching. And he can punch between the gaps and find holes and opportunities that normally your average fighter wouldn't see. He cranks up the punch count again. John threw 120 punches by CompuBox count in the ninth round, landing 31 of them. He's been over 100 thrown in each of the last three rounds. Harold, how do you have it through now? Attention, 88, 83, seven rounds to two. Chris John. Jim, he just continues to outwork Rocky Juarez. Rocky will get inside and will throw one punch, and that's it. They just didn't break that. Get inside, one punch. In the meantime, John keeps moving, doubles, triples that jab, comes over the top with the right hand, or he drops that right hand down. He's outworking Rocky Juarez. I mean, he's winning this fight on sheer volume of clean, effective punches. Seven to two, Chris John. Yeah, you know, we've seen too often, especially in someone's hometown, Good left hook by Juarez. The first round Good right hand rounds. by Chris John. That they get the close deci or decisions because the judges constantly give them the benefit of the doubt in every round. It's not enough to, to make a plausible argument that a fighter wins a round. You would hope judges would score the rounds unbiasedly. You hope. Good right hand by John. Energy level stays high. Thought process stays clear. Good fighter. We have not seen him before. Juarez, like John, showing terrific stamina, determination, still coming forward, trying to close the difference. Distance, good uppercut inside by Chris John. Juarez looking to land a body shot and getting ripped to the face twice. Interesting to hear John's trainer, Craig Christian, between rounds saying you need to win these last three rounds. On the road, take well, nothing for, uh, for granted. Well, right? I, I, I would tell him, too, because, you know, it, it still could be a close fight. You know, we have John and Outland, but we never know what's going on with judges. It's really not in fights. thousand percent. Punch combination by John while Juarez was looking to land one punch. There you go. Just when Juarez was getting set to punch, John got out four punches before. That pattern has been repeated throughout the fight. And is the reason that our hunch is that John deserves the lead on the scorecard. Emmanuel's entirely correct in saying this is an unpredictable commodity in that regard. If I was Rocky, I would not for what somebody is a waste. Every punch should go to the head. Good. This is the man. Great. Listen, Rock. We got two rounds left, baby. Two rounds left. You want to win the world title, you got to win these two rounds. You understand? Let me take a look at that. You understand me? You're listening to me. You want to win the world title, you got to win these two rounds. Big. You understand? I need you to get in there now, and I need you to just rough this guy up. You got to stay close, okay? Look, use your jab to get in, though. We only want you to get in. Just let the hands go. That's all it is. Move both hands. Back step, jab, back step, Ready, and you're catching with the one, two the whole time. All right? Listen to me. You're jabbing, back stepping the whole round with the one, two. Jab, back step, one, two. Jab, back step, one, two. And you're fitting the whole round, okay? We must win the next two rounds for sure. Let's go, Let's go. 
Happy box numbers in the tenth round. More of the same. Chris Johns, 38 out of 118. Juarez, 21 out of 72. Johns, 24 power connects in the round. The high for him so far. You see, it's more of the same, Jim. How can one fighter who's outlanding another fighter in every round, seemingly two to one, be losing a fight? Well, of course, judges don't see those numbers. Judges don't count punches. Judges operate according to an impressionistic view of the fight. And Juarez has landed some good punches. In fact, he may have landed more ooh and ah type punches than has John. It's just that they have come at intervals as opposed to the constant flow that the Indonesian fighter has been able to provide. There's also the matter of Juarez's marked face, the cut above his eye, the blood, and sometimes judges score that. And, you know, what catches the judges out the time, too, is a guy, just the body movement of a fighter like Chris Young. He's moving, he's twisting, his turning, he's very flashy, and he catches the attention of judges a lot, just his body movement. Well, Juarez's knockout of Barrios last September was his only knockout ever past the 10th round. Perhaps that's why Ronnie Shields wasn't asking for that, but rather saying, win the last two rounds. There's that hook to the head you mentioned, Emmanuel. Yeah, Juarez tried it and landed. Yeah, there it is again. I'm saying, it's very seldom as he's been throwing in the fight. And lately, he's been landing pretty active when he does punch. Now, why did you say in the last round that you would tell him not to bother with body punches? He's not going to, I don't think, stop this with any body punch. And if you haven't worn him down by now, forget about it. I, everything I would throw would be for going to a knockout. A pretty good yeah. left hook right there to the body. But, but the point is that he's done the body work already, it right? And hasn't brought any dividends at this stage. So I would go off. He's got to do damage to the head. High energy fight. Three and a half minutes to go in the fight. Another good left hook to the body by Rocky Juarez. And a good straight right hand up there. Another Juarez rally. Let's see if John can answer in the last 20 seconds of the round. Rocky did come back to stop oh. Barrios late last time out. Crowd is on his feet. So it's a very explosive prep round. Can't wait for these next 45 seconds to pass. Last round. Yes, Mississippi, Rocky. No. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Yes, sir. You hear that crowd? You hear that crowd? They want to see you knock this guy out, all right? No, sir. Big step. And throw the other hand in the right hook. All right? Set back step one, two. And throw the other hand the right hook. All right, keep the jet down, man. Keep the jet down. Yeah, man, throw punches this last round. I need you working your hand, okay? Four Just let me. All I need you working your hand. You must win. You keep on your toes. On, one, two, one, two. Last round, last round, last round. box numbers through the 11th round show that Chris John has landed 127 more punches in the fight than Juarez, that he's thrown more than 300 more punches in the fight than Juarez, that he's thrown more than 100 punches in a round for each of the past five rounds. And still, the issue is not necessarily decided. Juarez landing the harder punches with an exultant home crowd behind him. High drama in Houston with a featherweight championship on the line. And so far, John is taking a play from oftentimes in fights like this year. The flasher boxer with the faster hands usually comes back and pulls the fights out usually. Whether it's Muhammad Ali or Sugar Ray Leonard, most of those fighters always poured it all on 
and, 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 and the movement really hurts the fighter who doesn't move that well in the late rounds when he's tired. And this time, Ronnie Shields did ask Rocky Juarez to go for the knockout. He's got to go for head punches, and every punch should have knockout written on it. Should no, the punches should have bite it like he's doing now, just wasted. Everything should be with full power to the chin. Rocky had real momentum going at the end of the last round. He's starting to get it back now, heading into the second round right as well. John looks hurt by a left hook. I believe this is the most hurt Chris John has been in the fight. Juarez with a chance. A minute and a half to go. John takes a deep breath, trying to gird himself for the last minute. Straight left hand by Warren. Rocky's got him in the corner. He let him out. Down the stretch they come in what has become a terrific fight. They're in the middle of the ring where John is faster and has the advantages. Juarez needs to come forward. feverishly screaming at him to move and box, not to slug. Juarez stalking, looking for one last big left hook. John backs him off with two right hands. They're going to make it to the belt. Tremendous effort by both fighters. And the crowd is on its feet again. Very quickly, let's take a look at the identities of the three judges who will have to sort all this out. Raul Cai, senior of California, 40 title fights. Had Calzaki over Kessler, 117-111. That was probably an accurate score, or pretty close to it. Tom Miller of Ohio, 28 title fights. Pacquiao over Marquez in the second Pacquiao-Marquez fight by one point. That was the determining scorecard for that fight. And then Gail Van Hoy of Texas, 36 title fights. Juan Diaz, 116-112 over Michael Katsidis in what was probably also an accurate scorecard and a clear Diaz win. Harold Letterman, how do you have it? Look at Jim, 116, 112, eight rounds to four, Chris John. Jim, I don't see how the judges can take it away from this kid. I mean, this kid really boxed through a zillion punches, kept that left jab working through combination, come over the top with a right hand. I, I mean, he just outworked Rocky Juarez. Rocky made it close in the last three rounds. I think he won at least two of them. But be as it may, Chris John has just too big an early lead. 116, 112, Chris John. Let's go to Michael Buffer and find out who won the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, special thanks to Samson Boxing for co-promoting this bout. Here in Houston, Texas, we go to the scorecards. All three judges scored the bout the same. Raul Cai Sr., Gail Van Hoy, and Tom Miller have it. 114-114, a draw. Champion retains the title. Well, the hometown crowd response is, of course, predictable. But in what was a terrific fight with sensational efforts by both fighters, probably not the most unfair draw we've ever seen. In fact, maybe not so bad. John holds on to his featherweight championship. 
Juarez falls short again in his fourth title shot, but just barely short. CompuBox numbers. John Landing, 138 more punches. Throwing nearly 400 more punches. And landing at a higher connect percentage. But Juarez landed the harder shot, overcame a big cut over his left eye, fought furiously and bravely down the stretch. And right now, Max Kellerman's in the ring with both fighters. Congratulations, Rocky. You fought extremely well. How does it feel to know that you missed taking the belt by one point? Well, first of all, let me thank the Lord for uh, giving me the strength to come out safe and um, for this opportunity. Um, it was a great show, you know. I, I, fought, I fought with all my heart. I think um, I thought I won the fight, you know. Um, and it's unfortunate that I wasn't able to uh, win the world title here in my hometown. But it didn't put a loss on my record. Chris John is a good fighter. I think I might have gave up some of the uh, mid rounds where um, that's my fault. You started extremely quickly, faster than we've seen you in the past, and you closed the show fast. What happened in the middle rounds? Well, I think when I got cut, I mean, I don't think the cut really has to do much, much with it, but I think it had a little, little to do, do with it. But I feel that um, I just kind of, not to say slacked off, but I kind of just laid back in the mid rounds, and uh, I knew in the later rounds I had to pick it up. I mean, the rounds go by so fast, sometimes you don't realize what round it is. and. Uh, I finally realized my, my coach, Ronnie, was getting on me and telling me to pick it up, pick it up if, uh, if I wanted to win the world title. I knew I had a lot in me, and uh, that's what I did. That's why I felt that I came out with in the later rounds, and I thought I took the fight. Thanks for a great fight, Rocky. Chris, did you think you won the fight? Yeah, I think I, I, I count and pound it, yeah. What do you think about the verdict, the draw? Um, what can I say? Yeah, I, I just, I, I win by point, yeah, but what can I say? How, how do you feel about Rocky Juarez, the kind of, fought, the kind of fight that he uh, presented tonight? He's not bad, he's, he's a tough fighter, yeah? He can show his, his you know, his, his, his strength until last round, yeah? Rematch, Marquez, Vasquez, who are you most interested in? I, I'm ready for all that. <laughs> thank you, Chris, for a great fight. Jim? All right, thank you very much. In case you're wondering what brought about the draw, it was that all three official judges gave the last two rounds to Rocky Juarez. Now, a lot's coming your way in coming months. Let's take a look. Monday night, it's live women's tennis. Join us for the BNP Paribas Showdown for the Billie Jean King Cup, featuring the Williams sister, Yelena Yankovic, and Anna Ivanovic. Each Monday, go to HBO.com for the latest installment of our original digital series, Ring of Life. This Monday, we'll post the first of three features on Gene Kirkland. March 7th, Boxing After Dark returns with a triple header jam-packed with young talent. Power hitters James Kirkland, the aforementioned from Ring Life, and Joel Julio meet in the main event. Also appearing that night in separate bouts, Robert Guerrero and Victor Ortiz. March 17th, catch the premiere of the next Real Sports with Brian Gumbel. Among the stories of feature on the world's most controversial alpine skier, Bodie Miller. April 11 marks a big night of boxing programming here on HBO. It's the premiere of the documentary film Thriller in Manila, which takes an in-depth look at the epic third fight between Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. That same night will also bring you the premiere of the four-episode series Pacquiao Hatton 24-7, as well as live world championship boxing with Paul Williams facing off against Winky Wright. For all that and more, log on to HBO.com.